defense vanished to the Super Bowl when they're trying to win it for it. Third down, 18. Dropping down, looking down, looking down. Those up in the pass. And the ball is Derek Brooks 30. Brooks to the 29. He's going to Derek Brooks all the way. There it is. The dagger's in. We are going to win the Super Bowl. In 2003, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers won Super Bowl 37. The team was anchored by linebacker Derek Brooks, who in addition to his many accolades on the field has made civic engagement a life's work off of it. The 2003 Defensive Player of the Year looks back on his career and the many lives that he's been able to impact along the way. So I couldn't help but notice that chain on your wrist. Oh. <laughs> Can you tell me a little bit about that? This actually chain is a gift from Warren Sapp. Uh, he gave this to the members of our 2002 defense when we won the Super Bowl. The symbolism behind it is we're all going to be linked forever like a chain. Oh. We had three layers of... Tampa cover two is our bread and butter defense, there's no doubt about it. It's a lot of nonverbal communications that, that people don't understand. That's why I say people could come in with a Tampa two and use it as a blueprint, but they're never perfected because they never had the cards. We are the parts. The Mike linebacker is responsible for the middle third of the field. Derek was as good as anybody at it. His ability to diagnose what was going on. I mean, I called him the Florida Highway Patrol. Florida's 900 miles of highway, and he covered it all. Going to his right, going, no, it's all, all the bubble, it's intercepted. Derek Brooks, that's another one. I remember walking out of that, that tunnel. San Francisco's dead as a door now. Derek Brooks, turn around like we're shooting a hand cut off. Like that, dropping, but that's intercepted. Going coast to coast, Rodney Barber. That is the dagger. Go home, Eagle fans. We closed the bat. Shut it down. I know Derek never missed a game in his career. That was my standard. He was the one guy that if you were going to be the greatest in this franchise, you got to be at least that. And that's, that's who Derek Brooks is. When I got here in 1996, we'd had 13 straight losing seasons. I'll never forget the first meeting, uh, telling those guys, I said, hey, we want to win, we want to win championships, but if that's all we do, it won't be very meaningful. What we need to do is become part of this community, make Tampa a better place to live, find some fulfillment away from the game, be role models for the city. That's going to be important. That's what people are going to remember. It started simply by me I just walked out of a game uh, early 1996 and saw two kids hanging around at the stadium and asked me if they wanted to come to the game. And they said yes, and I went in, got them a couple tickets. And I just told them, man, I, I asked them where they were from, and they told me they was from, you know, East Tampa, in a very challenged area in Tampa. So I went and visited the center. Growing up, there was a lot of crime around. I know a lot of girls that I grew up with didn't necessarily was able to follow their dreams. We always went to some place where we can just walk to, and the Boys and Girls Club was always walking distance. The first time we met, he would spend his Tuesdays, his day off from um, football practice to come to the Boys and Girls Club in Tampa. I'll never forget Derek first came into my office and the light bulb went off. I said, Coach, I get it. I get it. Thank you. This stage, it was given to us as an opportunity but the bigger influence was away from the game. And about eight months later, he came back into my office and he said, uh, I've been going to this Boys and Girls Club. I've really got a connection with the kids there, but I want to make a difference in people's lives. And that was the start of the Brooks Bunch. And boy, did he make a difference. Brooks Bunch uh, was kind of born in those humble beginnings had to be bigger than that. And it had to be poured into youth education. And this was the opportunity to do it in a neighborhood at the time that needed love. Kids needed to see things different than what they were seeing every day. 
And I want to provide this experience to show them life away from these walls that they live in to create hope. Every year we would pick a topic, pick a subject, and we would go take the trip so they get a chance to see, feel, and touch. We went to Washington, D.C. for a week, and then I took my first trip to uh, South Africa. Going to Africa, being able to have something tangible that you can touch and you can be a part of and you can truly experience in reality away from some of the, the struggles and of your everyday life. He was more of the kid learning and experiencing things than, than anything. He was just like one of us, taking it in and breathing this air for the first time and seeing these places and meeting these people for the first time. After my trip to South Africa led to uh, me opening my own uh, charter high school with Mr. DeBoyle, showing kids educational components that you didn't have to go to just a four-year university, but there was performing arts colleges you can go to, showing them medical school. If there was a guy that was the face of our team for a lot of reasons, it was Derek. And not just because of success on the football field, for everything that he was doing in, the, in this community. You wouldn't want other guy to put the exclamation point on that one. And, and we'll, I think everybody agrees with that. We're glad it was him. Look again, look again. Close up with a head to the side. Derek Brooks, Derek Brooks, 30. Brooks to the 25. He's going to Derek Brooks. Super Bowl 55, the, the symbolism behind that. I'm so humbled to be a co-chairman. Obviously, the Bucks making the Super Bowl is just one part of the history of Super Bowl 55. It is symbolic with a number that I've worn. I have my emotional moments, you know, when I see one of my original Brooks Bus members, Natasha Spencer, to see her now a doctor and saving lives and raising a family. And the kids tell me how much I saved their lives. I tell them, you guys saved me because you gave me a sense of purpose, perspective, and passion through my love of education that I had a chance to be. Derek Brooks' efforts are an example of how one person can help so many people. But this one person refuses to take all the credit. His motto is team. Together, everyone achieves more. Coming up next, 